वेलकम टू मिनतीस एजुकेशन फॉर सी एस आया एन टी ए यू जी सी नेट सेट जे आर एफ गेट जाम आई आई टी आर्टिकल सिक्सटी फाइव ऑफ द स्टैच्यूट ऑफ द इंटरनेशनल कोर्ट ऑफ जस्टिस आई सी जे स्टेट्स दैट द कोर्ट मे गिव एन एडवाइजरी ओपिनियन ऑन एनी लीगल क्वेश्चन एट द रिक्वेस्ट ऑफ वॉट एवर बॉडी मे बी ऑथोराइज बाय और इन अकॉर्डेंस विद द चार्टर ऑफ द यूनाइटेड नेशन टू मेक सच अ रिक्वेस्ट This means that the ICJ can provide legal advice on any legal question to any organ of the United Nations that is authorized to request such an opinion. This includes the General Assembly, the Security Council, the Economic and Social Council, the Trusteeship Council, and the specialized agencies of the United Nations. Advisory opinions are not binding on the organs that request them, but they carry great weight. and are often used to guide the decision making of those organs the icj has issued over 30 advisory opinions since its establishment in 1946 some examples of advisory opinions that the icj has issued include the legality of the threat or use of nuclear weapons 1996 the construction of a wall in the occupied palestinian territory 2004 The legality of Kosovo's declaration of independence 2010 The Genocide Convention 2018 Advisory opinions can play an important role in helping the United Nations to resolve complex legal issues and to promote international peace and security Article 62 of the Statute of the International Court of Justice ICJ is related to the court's power to allow a state to intervene in a case to which it is not a party the article states one should a state consider that it has an interest of a legal nature which may be affected by the decision in the case it may submit a request to the court to be permitted to intervene two it shall be for the court to decide upon this request This means that any state can request to intervene in an ICJ case if it believes that the outcome of the case could affect its legal interests. The court then has the discretion to decide whether or not to allow the state to intervene. There are a number of factors that the court may consider when deciding whether or not to allow a state to intervene. These include the nature of the state's legal interest in the case. the potential impact of the court's decision on the state's interests the stage of the proceedings the views of the parties to the case the interests of the court itself if the court allows a state to intervene the state will have the same rights as the parties to the case including the right to participate in the proceedings and to submit written and oral arguments States have intervened in a number of ICJ cases over the years. For example, in the case of Nicaragua v. United States, 1986, the court allowed several states to intervene, including El Salvador, Honduras, and Costa Rica. These states argued that the court's decision in the case could have a significant impact on their security interests. Article 62 of the ICJ statute is an important safeguard for the interests of states that are not parties to a case before the court. It allows states to participate in the proceedings and to present their views to the court. This can help to ensure that the court's decisions take into account the interests of all affected states. Article 59 of the Statute of the International Court of Justice ICJ is related to the binding force of the court's decrees or judgments it states that the decision of the court has no binding force except between the parties and in respect of that particular case this means that the icj's judgments are only binding on the parties to the case and only in relation to the specific dispute that was before the court The court's judgments do not create binding precedents for other cases or for other states. However, the ICJ's judgments are highly persuasive and are often cited in other legal proceedings. They also play an important role in the development of international law.
There is one exception to the rule that ICJ judgments are only binding on the parties to the case. Under Article 53 of the statute, the Security Council may request the ICJ to give an advisory opinion on any legal question. The Security Council is not bound by the court's advisory opinions, but it is customary for it to give them great weight. In general, Article 59 reflects the principle of state sovereignty. States are not normally bound by the decisions of other states or international organizations unless they have explicitly agreed to be bound. The ICJ is no exception to this rule. Here are some examples of how Article 59 has been applied in practice. In the case of Nicaragua v. United States, 1986, the ICJ found that the United States had violated international law by supporting the Contra rebels in Nicaragua. The United States refused to comply with the court's judgment, and the Security Council did not take any action to enforce it. In the case of Bosnia and Herzegovina v. Yugoslavia, 1996, the ICJ found that Serbia was responsible for genocide and other violations of international law during the Bosnian War. Serbia has not fully complied with the court's judgment, but it has taken some steps to do so. In the case of Georgia v. Russia, 2015, the ICJ found that Russia had violated international law by recognizing the independence of South Ossetia and Abkhazia. Russia has refused to comply with the court's judgment. In all of these cases, the ICJ's judgments were binding only on the parties to the case and only in respect of the specific dispute that was before the court. However, the court's judgments have played an important role in the development of international law and in bringing about changes in state behavior. Article 36 of the Statute of the International Court of Justice ICJ is related to methods of conferring jurisdiction upon the court. It states that the jurisdiction of the court comprises all cases which the parties refer to it and all matters specially provided for in the Charter of the United Nations or in treaties and conventions in force. There are two ways for states to confer jurisdiction on the ICJ. One, by special agreement. This is the most common way to confer jurisdiction on the ICJ. A special agreement is a written agreement between two or more states to submit a specific dispute to the court for adjudication. 2. By declaration under Article 36 2, of the statute, this is a more general way to confer jurisdiction on the court. A state may declare that it recognizes as compulsory the jurisdiction of the court in all legal disputes concerning certain categories of matters, such as the interpretation of a treaty or any question of international law. Only states that are parties to the statute of the ICJ can confer jurisdiction on the court. There are currently 193 states parties to the statute. Once jurisdiction has been conferred on the ICJ, the court has exclusive jurisdiction to settle the dispute. This means that the parties to the dispute cannot withdraw the case from the court or submit it to another international tribunal. The ICJ's jurisdiction is also limited by the fact that it can only adjudicate disputes between states. It cannot adjudicate disputes between individuals or private entities. Article 36 of the Statute of the ICJ is an important provision because it allows states to resolve their disputes peacefully and through the rule of law. The ICJ is the principal judicial organ of the United Nations and is highly respected by the international community. Thanks for watching. Visit again.